Good morning everyone, hope you're having a beautiful day and that you're ready for three mistakes to avoid in photography in 2021. What to improve on if you're ready, let's get started. All right, guys, welcome to a new episode. Today, I want to share with you some things that I've been working on lately because I've been making, let's say, mistakes, or at least I'm reviewing what I've been shooting, how I've been shooting, and I always try to improve on my photography and the way I'm shooting. So we had a bunch of cool trips, Pacific Northwest, Tanzania, I went quickly to France, and now back in Chicago in the streets. And there is something very important for us if we want to progress is to actually look back at those images and think how we're shooting and what we can improve in the future. So I have three actually areas of improvement, three mistakes that I really want to keep working on. Some of them are like long term and that's totally fine. I think it can help you if you're trying to become a better photographer yourself. Maybe you can let me know in the comments which areas you're trying to improve and if you can relate with what I'm going to be sharing or not. If you don't know me, my name is Pierre T. Lambert. I'm a travel adventure photographer and the creator of a special training program over 30 days to unleash your inner photographer. And the next session will be starting soon. So if you want more details, click the link in the description. You'll learn the program, how it works, why it could help you. It has worked for thousands of students before you. So if you want to join, if you want to progress, let's do it. Link is in the description. Now, for today, let's focus on three mistakes. The first one is going to be, you don't need to be shooting manual all the time. This is something I see a lot in myself, but also in others where we love to shoot manual. There is something very romantic about shooting manual. We dial in our settings, we're happy, we get the right scene. But what happens is when you're on the field, there are times where you need to be very, very quick. And if you're stuck in manual, you just did a panning shot and you had a slow shutter speed, but something really cool comes in the frame and you need to shoot again, well, you will miss that shot. And it has happened to me over the years, many, many times where I would miss those shots because I was shooting in manual and I wasn't fast enough to adapt the settings. So what I do now to avoid that is I always go back in aperture priority whenever I'm changing scene, when I'm changing environment, if I know I'm going to be run and gunning. Why is that? Because it allows me to take photos like this one. In Tanzania, we're in a car, it was super bumpy, there was tons of things happening, and I literally shot that at 50 millimeter through a window with a shutter speed fast enough because I had my aperture priority set with a minimum shutter speed of, it will depend on the situation, but 1 250th, 1 500th, or 1 1,000th of a second. And this is how you get those shots, literally from the car driving, even if you were earlier shooting maybe in manual. If you flip back to aperture priority and there is that really epic scene of that guy in the middle of the road with like dust everywhere, well, you'll be able to get it. So don't get ro too romantic about your manual shoot. There is those semi-auto modes that are great move back to aperture priority or even S if you know you're going to be in a very challenging environment where you need to shoot very fast. That's so, so important and it will avoid you missing those shots the one time opportunity when something runs in front of you and you can't get it. All right, my second mistake is simply to rush too much. Oh yes, you know my personality. I like to run, gun. I like to be everywhere, shoot everything at the same time. But there are times I really need to dial that down, that energy that's like really outward. I need to dial it down and refocus and take the time to take those photos and really work them through. The best example I have is with that photo, guys. And you've seen it, we're in Tanzania. I entered that hut, the light was amazing. And I literally took some of my favorite portraits ever in Tanzania. That was uh, with the family of our guide, very genuine and nice people, was so excited to shoot that. And as you can see on the clip, I take the photos and I show them quickly, I look at them. What I should have done is take an extra 10, 15 seconds to actually zoom in and realize that I had a massive shadow on the face right there and that it was because someone was blocking the light in the entrance. And so asking that person to move get the same photo would be perfect. After that person moved, we have a great light on her face or at least something dramatic that I really like, very cinematic. But the problem is that I actually prefer a little bit that expression. So if I could like blend those two photos together into one, that would be perfect. Now, life is not perfect. You gotta flow with it. And it means sometimes you gotta be quicker. Sometimes you can take more of your time. In that situation, honestly, I felt a little bit rushed. People were waiting, people wanted to do things. Uh, we had to go places, but 
Honestly, this is one of those examples where take an extra 10, 20, 30 seconds. Look at the photo, zoom in, especially when you're super excited about it and make sure it is perfect. If it's not, that's okay. Just ask to redo it. With that said, I also was lucky because just after we had an epic light at sunset, I was able to actually capture another portrait of the same woman with a better light. But I really love that, that scene inside. So taking more the time and really making sure reviewing the photos on the field will save me actually problems later even in post productions it will also save me from missing the shot or that one little detail that breaks the photo versus makes it so whenever you can take that extra 30 seconds i'm talking to myself but maybe you can relate to that and make sure it is perfect mistake number three guys i've been actually working on it for a while now Mistake number three is simply not communicating enough with the people we're shooting. What does that mean? We might be in a POV, in a market, we might be in the streets, we might be shooting somewhere and interacting with the people is key if you want to actually understand and get different shots. Why is that? It's cool to get those like sniper shots where people do things and you don't interact with them and it's genuine, but whenever you're able to talk to them, break that ice, really discuss with them, you can actually tap into a different layer for the photo. So my work is really to communicate more with the people. You might have seen it when I was on Me in Mexico on the beach. As bad as my Spanish was, I was trying to talk with the guy and it was the same thing when I was in the middle of the streets. Now, when I was in Tanzania, that's when it got a little more tricky because sometimes the barrier language was there. So I wasn't able to communicate fully. But what I found out is that when you discuss with your mom, first of all, you're able to make them feel comfortable. You're able to bring out maybe hidden personality traits or sometimes they will show you things that you never even thought of that can be even better for those photos. And that's why discussing more, having more communication is key in my opinion in photography we have a great example when we're walking around the streets uh in arusha we ended up meeting those orange guys and i just talked to them without the intention of shooting them at first taking any photo and they were so cool that we just struck a conversation and then i started taking the photos and it turned out great those guys were super nice but really whenever possible try to speak with people and do it more and more and more and that's what i've been working on if you look at the, all the povs over time you will probably realize that i've actually been working on that a lot personally those are things that i when i look at photos i'm like damn it i knew i should have moved that angle uh, this could have been better or maybe in the future this can be adjusted and especially at the beginning when you're learning i would write all that down now i still i have a few to remember so i can remember them but at the beginning damn there there's a lot to improve so it's always great to write it down you know and work on those if you're looking for someone to actually help you over 30 days day by day step by step to get to the next level and to unleash your inner photographer well join the 30 day adventure to great photos it's a really really good program that has worked for thousands of students we'll work on it together link is in the description again guys what is important is not that you join a course or that you join a training program or workshop what is important is that you do the work yourself on yourself you can be self-taught you can be uh using mentors it doesn't matter you have to do the reflection and really try to apply that it requires a little bit of self-discipline but it will go a long way now with that being said i hope this has been helpful and that you will get out there and crush it next time that you will try something different try something new as usual but remember always analyze what you did in order to improve in the future it's I would say that applies for everything in life. Now, if you don't know it, the podcast is returning. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms and make sure you are on the newsletter because I've got some really cool stuff coming up in the top five. Now, with that being said, have a beautiful day. I'll see you in the next one.